Alright guys, so today I'm going to show you how to uh, cure loose brown trout eggs. Um, you know, this process I'm going to show you can be used not only on loose brown trout eggs, but also on loose, you know, king, coho, um, and steelhead eggs as well. So, very easy process, doesn't take long at all. So, um, you know, when I first get a first get a loose fish, what I'm going to do is I'm going to milk her out right away. Um, so I'm just going to, you know, hold the gallon bag underneath her and just milk the belly into the gallon bag. Uh, very simple process and there's going to be a little when you milk the fish there's going to be some water in the bag as well that's going to come out of the fish you know that's normal um, and when that happens you know I just like to drain the drain the water out um, just open up the bag a little bit drain the water out and those will be those will be good to go and ready to cure so when I bring them home I'm going to uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my eggs out on paper towel or a towel like I have right here I'm going to let them air dry for probably 20 minutes or so and just get the excess juices and water off of them. Um, really simple. So like I said, I'm just gonna, you know, paper towel works just as well. I have a towel laid out right here. I'm just gonna lay them on the towel, let them air dry for 20 minutes and uh, they'll be ready to cure. And as far as curing them goes, it's really simple. So after I air dry them, I'm just gonna put them in a little, little dish, you know. Um, so these, these are eggs that are already been air dried. Uh, these eggs are just, just put out to air dry. And I'm just gonna, just gonna add probably you know, I only have probably, uh, I don't know, a cup and a half eggs in here. Um, there wasn't a ton of eggs in the fish that I just caught and milked out. But, you know, for about a about a cup of eggs, cup and a half eggs, I'm just going to add about three spoons of Braxel fire to them. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to um, oversaturate them with cure because then it's just going to... It's just going to be overdone. Their eggs are going to get messy with cure. So you want to add just about three spoonfuls. You know, say about a cup. For a cup of eggs, about three spoonfuls of cure. Then I'm just gonna mix the eggs around in the dish right here. So I'm just gonna just gonna mix them around so all the eggs are exposed to the cure. You know you don't want to have you don't want to have cure um, don't want to have too much cure in one spot. So just evenly distribute them throughout the eggs. And uh, you know after after these are after you put the Braxel fire on, these are going to stay good for a long time. I mean, I can have these in the fridge for, I've had my cured eggs in the fridge for a month, a little bit longer at times. Um, but you can also freeze them and they'll, they'll hold great in the freezer as well. So I'll show you what these look like here in a second after I mix them up a little more. You want to make sure, like I said, to mix them up thoroughly. You just want to make sure that cure is evenly distributed. And, uh, you know, when I freeze these eggs, I like to, I usually like to vacuum seal them. That seems to preserve the eggs best. Um, you know, if you don't have a vacuum sealer, what I'll do is I'll put them in a Ziploc or I'll lay out a sheet of paper towel, um, spread the eggs out on the paper towel, and I'll just fold them nicely so the eggs are laying flat on the paper towel, put them in a Ziploc bag, suck as much air out as I can and put them in the freezer. I mean, I did that for years and it works just fine. They don't stay as, they don't stay as good in the, free, in the freezer for as long, you know, without getting freezer burnt, but it, I mean, they'll stay good for up to six, seven months like that, which is for most people all the time it needs. So I, I've mixed these up now, and I'll show you show you guys what they look like. You know, you can always lay them out again. And uh, if you see if you see groups of eggs that aren't that don't have that aren't exposed to the cure, you can always roll them and roll them around until uh, they're evenly distributed. Okay, so that's our that's our final product right there. And you know, after I put after I put my cure on these eggs, you know, I'll let them I'll uh, I'll lay them out. And I'll let them air dry again with the cure on them for, I don't know, another 20 minutes, half hour or so. Let them toughen up a little bit, and those eggs are going to be good to go. All right, so I'll show you guys how I tie my sacks here now. Um, it's really simple. You know, it takes a little it takes a little finesse work, a little practice to get used to it, but it's easy. Um, once you once you do a few, I mean, you'll have the, you'll have the game of it. Um, so what I'm going to do with these brown trout eggs is I'm going to put about a dozen in a sack, you know. And I mean, I'll go anywhere from about 9 to 15 eggs per sack for brown trout eggs. Um, but I like to stay in that range. It seems to work best for me, that size of bags. Um, you know, if I was tying loose Chinook or loose Coho eggs, I might, I usually only run about five to seven eggs per bag. If steelhead, probably about eight or nine loose eggs per bag for uh, steelhead. Um, so with these brown trout eggs, though, they're the smallest eggs, so I'm gonna put about a dozen in the sack. Okay, so I'm gonna put about a dozen eggs in the bag. Now I'm just gonna fold each corner. I'm gonna fold each corner. I'm just gonna slow, gently twist the top of it. Now, as I twist, I'm gonna take my left hand and I'm just gonna push the eggs in so it forms a round ball. 
Okay, so after it's, you know, you don't want it too tight before you tie the knot, but you want to, you know, you want a nice ball shape. Just leave a little bit of, little bit of extra room in there because it's going to tighten down it once you uh, tie it up. So now I'm going to take my elastic thread, um, and I love this elastic thread because it just makes it so easy, um, so quick and easy when you're tying bags. So what I'll simply do with the elastic thread is I'll wrap it about five times, pull it tight as it stretches out to its max, wrap it another five times, snap it tight and that's all there is to it so after it's snapped just gonna cut it just above the knot and I like to take all the fluff off some guys like the fluff in there but I like to make it I like to make it all bait I don't like any extra extra goop on there and that's that's good to go that's a perfect sack and uh, works awesome